You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. We've got a very good question today, a hard question. So hard. It's a fun one. It's a good one. <laughs> Let's save you from yourself. I was, I was, I'm Rob. I was trying to tee up a that's what she said joke, but hey, yeah, whatever. Well, well, okay, well. Oof, yeah, all right, that. all right. Anyway, we're just going to hop in right into today's question. This is brought to you by Drone U Membership. If you are not a member and you want to elevate your flight experience, you want to learn from experience, you want to learn the systems necessary to systemically limit liability, increase your skill, and have a whole lot more fun and get the shots your competition can't. That's the Drone U difference as we fly high and above and beyond flight school. Hope you join us right now. Coaching calls, monthly coaching calls are free and included with membership the value has never been higher. So why aren't you a member? The DroneU.com. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Great podcast. It's my number one. I listen to you guys all the time when a new one episode comes out. And I go through a lot of the old ones just to refresh my memory on everything you guys have said. I also understand that you like to be challenged. And I want to challenge you. But I want to do so by using your own words. You've recently suggested the Anafi AI as a potential alternative for mapping if you're not looking for DJI. And I challenge you to back up why you would say that because March 27th, 2020, in a podcast that I'm listening to currently, you explain very quickly, linear rolling shutter, I'm done, it's science. So with that as my response, how do you suggest to others that the Anafi AI is something we should potentially look at for doing, you know, maybe basic mapping as, uh, you know, with larger jobs, you would want, uh, you said not to use quadcopters. So if we're just doing small jobs, why would I want to go with something with a linear rolling shutter when I can go with a mechanical shutter on a DJI? and uh, get better quality because I can go faster, get the jobs done more efficiently and everything else that you've explained and I've tried to absorb. Um, So now I'm seeing this contradiction and I'm getting a little confused. I've got a Mini 3 Pro. It's got a 48 megapixel camera with a linear rolling shutter. So are you suggesting that that's just as good as the Anafi AI minus the 4G dongle that I could throw on a, a Mavic? I'm trying to get a little more understanding on that as I'd like to maybe buy a new drone in the next year or so. And I'm trying to figure out what I would save for. This Mini 3 Pro is something I just recently bought. So I'm, you know, very new to flying, but I've been listening to you guys for at least three years and uh, love what you guys do. So keep it up. Thank you. Easton, thank you. Really appreciate the thoughtful question and actually appreciate the way that you're tying episodes together because ultimately that's how you're going to get the most out of them. Um, Take it all together and kind of parse the information as best you can. And I'll just say it's a valid point. Um, Let's dig into kind of what, what you meant. Yeah, so first and foremost, I will just say, first of all, thank you for a challenging question. And also thank you for the delivery of asking it in a nice uh, and humble way. Because honestly, both of those points uh, deserve clarification. I will also say I was kind of having a political joke about it's just science. Because if you remember back in 2020, 2021, everyone was telling us to do things that ended up not being true because it's quote unquote science, but science allows for both sides to have an opportunity to speak and make an educated and objective decision. That said, I wouldn't use the Parrot Anafi AI linear rolling shutter. It's just science. Um, Let me explain. We actually ran a phantom map and an Anafi AI map side by side, same exact area, same ground sampling distance. The Anafi AI flew the mission faster than the phantom 
Okay. In processing those images, the phantom images took 26 minutes to produce a point cloud, an ortho, and a 3D textured mesh. It took two and a half hours for the Anafi AI to produce the exact same deliverables because it is a linear rolling shutter. So when it comes to 3D modeling, complex 2D maps, etc., the Anafi AI may not be the best drone for that. In fact, I would probably not use it. But now if you're in construction and you have a Pix40 cloud account with your Anafi AI and all that you need to make is an ortho mosaic, as a lot of construction companies do, the Anafi AI might be the absolute fastest generator of images or ortho mosaics possible because the Anafi AI is 5G enabled. So as you're flying, it's uploading the images to your pix 40 cloud account and autonomously generating an ortho mosaic. So it's extremely fast at doing that. Would I be focusing on 3D deliverables for that drone? No, because it is a linear rolling shutter and you're going to have a lot of issues with that particular aircraft. Now, it's very important to understand the rules of ground sampling distance. The rules of ground sampling distance are essentially how we acquire the map quality that we want, high res or low res. And those are dependent on three things. Number one is camera sensor size. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's a 48 megapixel, it matters how large the camera sensor is. It also is determined on focal length and altitude. Those are the three determinants of ground sampling distance. Okay, with the Anafi AI, uh, because it is a little bit of a larger sensor than the uh, Mini 3 Pro, well, it's capturing a whole lot of information, a whole lot more information. Also, the Anafi AI can run autonomous missions. In fact, the Anafi AI has more autonomous missions than any DJI uh, Enterprise drone right now. Um, it was all built by Pix4E. It's phenomenal. Um, that said, not always relevant to utilize that drone for running those missions. On your Mini 3 Pro, you do not have any autonomous missions. Uh, and I don't think that we should expect to see any. I know DJI just said that they're going to open up SDK for that Mini 3 Pro, but I would not be using the Mini 3 Pro to do mapping missions. Um, Again, because not a big enough sensor. Uh, it's not going to fly well linear enough. Linear shutter. Uh, linear rolling shutter. Um, gosh, uh, you really the, can't. A little bit of wind is going to blow it off course, uh, probably. And if you're, yeah, and if you remember, if there's more than a 15 degree deviation and roll on the camera, then the image stitching doesn't work. So there's a lot of factors. Also, geo-referencing and accuracy. You've got one of the cheapest compass pucks on that drone possible. And so are you really going to be able to create anything that's decent? And I would argue no. It's not something I would ever use for a professional deliverable, that's for sure. I think, honestly, now that we've seen the Mavic 3 Enterprise come out, you're really looking at, do I buy a Mavic 3 Enterprise? Do I buy a Parrot Anafi or another drone? Those two drones are similar price points, but the entire point of me bringing up what I said in that show was if you cannot fly Chinese drones, what options do you have at those price points? And you are right, linear rolling shutter does take longer to fly missions, and it does take longer to process missions. Again, to be succinct, in comparing it against a Phantom, it flew faster than the Phantom, but it processed images at almost 10 times slower than the Phantom. Now, if you're using Pix40 Cloud to just do orthos, then it's a great solution for rapid orthos when on construction. The Anafi AI is a, is a really great drone for the price point. You know, again, looking at the Mavic 3 Enterprise, it's flying, you know, mapping missions at a th at one third the time that it takes a Phantom to do the same mission. And it's also getting much higher quality, much more detail, much more lifelike imagery. All that to be said, I really appreciate you asking this question. Should you be mapping with a Mavic 3 or Mini 3 Pro? I don't think so. Linear rolling shutter is definitely inferior to a mechanical shutter, that is for sure. That really matters in two points. One, how many mapping missions are you doing? Volume. Because if your mapping missions take longer and they take longer to process, you may not be able to keep up in a regular cycle of completing these mapping missions. In addition, that linear rolling shutter is going to degrade your accuracy significantly, whether it's relative or absolute accuracy. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, membership does have access to the new comprehensive mapping course where you can learn about all of those things and more because mapping is something that you don't really have an opportunity to screw up. You really need to know what you're doing. Um, now in construction where maps are typically not as 
often geo-referenced, you have a little bit more flexibility. Um, but again, I think if anyone's getting into mapping, you need to be educated on geo-referencing. You need to be educated in acquisition techniques and you need to be educated in processing techniques because at the end of the day, all three affect your ability to deliver on any given job. Very interesting. And the thing about it is, too, that the, the drones that have been coming out, the mechanical shutter just seems to be elusive. On certain drones, yeah, 100%. Well, and you know you know that Parrot understands the importance of a global shutter because the obstacle avoidance cameras are global shutters so that they can take in the information as fast as possible and spit out a map and know how to fly inside of that environment because it's the obstacle avoidance cameras. So I will say, you know, I think... I think domestic manufacturers are learning how to build these drones um, at a much slower rate than companies like DJI. DJI also had more engineers on their team than our entire national labs in the United States. So it makes sense why they made such enormous leaps in technology compared to everyone else. Now that said, there are opportunities to learn from them and create a phenomenal Honda Civic of drones that allows you to do uh, mapping and video and photo very well. Yeah, I'll take the Civic Type R. Yeah, so thank you for your question. Thank you for it to be challenging. I appreciate the clarification. Um, I think it's a very good question. And I also think that you know, I always said I would not map with the LRS shutter, and that's still true. But I think when you dig down on what deliverables, when you combine Pix4D Cloud Mapper with 5G and that drone, you can literally do maps at lightning speed. Um, and that's great. But if I'm doing anything 3D, I'm probably going to want to use a mechanical shutter just because the quality of data is going to be superior in every way possible. Yeah. It's also going to allow me to do volume-based business, which if you're a drone pilot and you're going to make money, you need to be doing jobs frequently. And with that said, an LRS makes that really, really hard. Mm -hmm. So so at this point, because he did say, Easton did say that he's going to be looking to buy a drone, and let's just say that things remain constant for a while, and let's just say a budget in the neighborhood, give or take a five grand, are we looking at the Mavic 3E? I think for mapping, the answer is a solid yes. Yeah. Now, again, we're not going to get those great video features like we have on the regular Mavic 3. Hopefully, DJI opens that up. But I think the answer would be if he can fly Chinese, Mavic 3 Enterprise. If he cannot fly Chinese, you know, an Afi AI is a great drone. Um, there are a lot of great drones out there. Uh, and I think a $5,000 budget really slims the opportunities or options, I should say, sure. for drones. And uh, I'm not really sure outside of those two options what he would have. He could buy a refurbished Inspire 2 and get it all. So I there really, you go. I really miss my Inspire too. That thing is so much fun to fly. Yeah, that's a bummer. So anyway, well, and we'll see what the uh, the Inspire three looks like too. Yeah, I'm excited Probably for that. Probably not going to be five grand though. Yeah, if I had to guess. True, true. Anyway, thank you again for joining us. As always, I would invite uh, this caller to join us for a mapping class. Maybe we even give them a five percent discount just to say thanks for a challenging question and asking it in a respectful manner. I mean, I don't expect respect from anyone, um, but I do appreciate uh, when people are nice and ask hard questions with confidence and and, and calm because uh, it means he's really looking for an objective answer, and I appreciate that. Yeah, so, me too. So, frankly, thank you. Absolutely, well done, Easton. We appreciate it. And uh, if you have a question, whether it's to hold us accountable like Easton did, or just in general, you've got some business questions or you're wondering about uh, anything that goes on related to your drones or drone business, we'd love to hear from you at askdroneu.com. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Please leave a review wherever you listen to the show. And Rob, do we really have 2,175 questions in, mm. in the pool right now? No, no, not okay. in the pool. Over the history of the <laughs> okay. Drone U or Ask Drone U, yeah. It's a lot of questions. All right. Anyway, thank you again for joining us. Ask your question, askdroneu.com. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you in membership.